In preparation for a study I will describe in a future video, I realized it's helpful to first describe an amazing new data source, something called the Copernicus Arctic Regional Reanalysis, or CARA for short. So in this video, I will define what a reanalysis is and give some detail to the CARA reanalysis. I have been on the CARA team since 2018, contributing data from the Greenland ice sheet recorded by automatic weather stations from the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, GEUS, where I've worked the last 10 years. Into the CARA product, GEUS is also contributing daily satellite-derived snow and ice reflectivity of Arctic glaciers, including the Greenland ice sheet, through European Space Agency contracts. A good place to start to understand what CARA is, is to review an important earlier and still ongoing global dataset called the European Global Reanalysis, or ERA, currently in version 5, or ERA 5 for short. To understand what a reanalysis is, listen to the following from the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. It is today more vital than ever that we have long and reliable historical records of the Earth's climate. Thanks to the abundance of modern observation methods, our weather records for the present are quite complete. The problem is, these observations are not evenly distributed around the globe. Climate reanalysis can solve this problem. It combines observations made in the past with today's weather model to deliver a complete and consistent picture of the past weather. We first run a short-range forecast and then we wait until we receive all the observations within an assimilation window. Once we have received all the observations, we go back at the beginning of the time of this window and we adjust the previous forecast based on all the received observations. 4D VAR is the only tool we can use to bring together these observations to build a, a consistent, physically reasonable state of the atmosphere. Hundreds of millions of observations need to be brought together in a consistent way and 4D VAR is the only system that can do that. So now you understand the European Global Reanalysis draws together many millions of weather and satellite observations into a data set with hundreds of weather and climate variables that is continuous in space and time. In this animation, you can see the ERA-5 atmospheric humidity with tropical moisture reaching Greenland in an atmospheric river. Today, we have open access to this kind of information to study climate events that profoundly increase our understanding of the climate system. ERA-5 data are brought to us by the EU Copernicus program. Now, why is this program named Copernicus? Nicolaus Copernicus, a 16th century inhabitant of what today is Poland, made a pioneering contribution to modern science. Copernicus changed our perspective to one of an infinite universe, conceived until that time as having the planets and the sun orbit the Earth. Copernicus's insight set in motion a spirit of discovery through scientific research, which allows us to better understand the world we live in. Now with that background on what is a reanalysis, I'll be talking about the Copernicus Arctic Regional Reanalysis. CARA currently has these two domains, west and east, with three hourly data running from 1991 to present. The grid domains here have two and a half kilometer horizontal resolution, which is very fine as compared to the ERA-5 data, which is 31 kilometers. It has 65 vertical layers and a very fancy modeling system. This is convection permitting non-hydrostatic state of the art. And the ERA-5 data that you've heard about initialize CARA at the lateral boundaries. And within the domain, there is additional data assimilation. And what you see here, the blue dots are the meteorological stations that are assimilated by ERA-5. And we've added the additional data points, the, the red circles, 
where we're providing much more constraint to the climate of the Greenland ice sheet. As I mentioned earlier, we are putting in our own data, being able to drive CARA with our own measurements, as you can imagine, is very satisfying. So not only can we use the data for various research studies and climate monitoring and documenting climate events, these data make the CARA reanalysis more accurate. And there's a lot of other sources of information going into CARA, including weather balloon sounding. So this represents the upper atmosphere temperature and humidity profiles, really key for producing a more realistic atmospheric situation. Ship data. Ships are recording sea surface temperature, and now an increasing number of buoys are transmitting this kind of information that then gets assimilated to further constrain the accuracy of the climate at the sea surface. Aircraft, commercial airliners, are actually recording air temperature, wind speed, direction, and humidity that is also going into driving this numerical weather system. You have different satellite missions that are recording vertical profiles of temperature and humidity, and this data is now even more abundant, so there's more constraint of CARA going forward. Satellite scatterometers are able to measure wind speed at the sea surface, and so this is yet further constraint on CARA's accuracy. And here is a comparison of ERA-5 and CARA, and so the ERA-5 bias here, these are 13 stations in Greenland and the CARA bias in green is closer to zero than the ERA-5. So this verification study where some observations are left out confirms that the assimilation has lower bias and a lower variance as compared to ERA-5. The satellite derived surface reflectivity, AKA albedo, ERA-5 had and still has a constant albedo for the Greenland ice sheet at 0.84. And so by adding in the satellite measurements, we get a much more accurate description of the surface reflectivity, and that defines how much sunlight the surface absorbs. It improves the temperature, for example, here over land, and of course, over the ice sheet. One of the really impressive improvements on CARA was very high detail and more accurate in the description of whether the surface is land, sea, ice, etc. You saw this for temperature and here's wind speed. So again the CARA bias for these 13 Greenland stations has a lower difference with the observations around zero than ERA 5. Similarly, the standard deviation of the CARA data is less. So anything that's closer to this vertical line of zero here means that the CARA data set is more accurate than ERA-5. And this is a regional summary where a lot of field data from, for example, Svalbard, Greenland coast, Iceland, Norway, etc. The green areas are where, for example, two meter air temperature bias is less if the bias is higher, it gets a red color, so in the Icelandic fjords, ERA-5 is doing better in terms of bias. But overall, the green pattern you can see is how, in almost all cases, the CARA data are more accurate than the ERA-5 data that we know and love. I compared the precipitation during an extreme 14 August 2021, and so here you can see the 31 kilometer resolution of the ERA-5 data relatively blocky. The CARA data at two and a half kilometers horizontal is much more detailed and resolves better these very localized extremes in, in this case, rainfall. And the difference of the two with the ERA-5 being more wet, these green colors up here show that ERA-5 is drifting the moisture further inland and that's not surprising because at 31 kilometers, you're smoothing out the coastal terrain, which is steep and jagged, and the precipitation is really generated by how steep does the terrain get. And so by a more realistic treatment of the terrain, the 
rainfall is placed closer to the coast where the mountains and the steeper terrain is and we can see that era 5 is pushing too much of this moisture inland further verification of this with independent measurements shows the comparison with field data of rainfall and the correlation if it's high then these two data sets are more similar to each other and here's era 5 some other state-of-the-art modeling systems and then the CARA reanalysis has the highest correlation and the average ratio of the observations and the model is actually in agreement whereas the observations are wetter than era 5 by 40 percent this is a zoom in of southern greenland and these are vertical velocities an example of a climate variable that we can't easily observe in situ and here we have it gridded over all of this domain and here we see the red colors are strong updrafts in the fjords and then a downdraft in the lee as the flow is co coming on shore and we see other things like updraft over this southern Kissimmee lobe of the greenland ice sheet another feature is an updraft jet here and the study that i mentioned at the start of the video that this video is made to introduce what is CARA is the study, that study is really dealing with the very fine scale effects and the d dynamics and thermodynamics when there's a really strong onshore flow.